the TCP uses uh, four timers to handle its operations. Uh, the first timer is called retransmission, uh, persistence, then we have keep alive, and then we have uh, time with it. And uh, we'll start discussing the very important uh, uh, timer uh, known as retransmission timer, or we also call it retransmission timeout. So let's start discussing the retransmission timer first. Okay, so first we are interested in discussing uh, retransmission timeout. And this is also known as RTO. And remember, um, in the beginning of this lecture, we talked about uh, retransmit a segment, retransmitting a segment or identifying a congestion. Uh, this is either being done uh, if, uh, if an acknowledgement is not received and RTU has expired or there are triple duplicate acknowledgements, right? So let's talk about the calculation of retransmission timeout. So this, this timer is important because uh, automatic repeat request depends on uh, retransmission to achieve reliability. So sender sets are timeout waiting for acknowledgement. So if this retransmission timeout uh, goes out, this means the sender will be uh, retransmitting. But uh, this retransmission timeout, important, we have uh, uh, you know earlier discussed this also, that this retransmission timeout means this RTO. Uh, this RTO is uh, this RTO is computed is computed from yes you're right round trip time round trip time <laughs> uh, but the problem is that uh, uh, the RTT um, varies, means RTT of a path varies over the time. So, so, so this means uh, we will not be having a consistent uh, RTT, round trip time. Why? Because uh, on a path to the destination, it varies because maybe uh, routes are changing because of route, changes. If a path is uh, changed from source to destination, obviously the round trip time will also uh, change. Or maybe this RTT uh, is affected because of congestion in the network. So if there's a congestion in the network, the round trip time will increase. The problem is uh, varying uh, round trip time complicates complicates the computation number one obviously retransmission timeout It complicates the retransmission timeout. We'll see in a minute how. And number two, it also affects uh, the optimal sender's window size. Optimal sender's window size. All right. So uh, if RTT is not stable, is uh, changing uh, because of the changes in route or because of congestion, this means uh, we'll have problems in calculating retransmission timeout and optimal sender's window size. And uh, what are these problems? Let's try to uh, see how this can affect, how a varying RTT can affect RTO. So, so if, let's do, it, let's do it with the help of example. And what we are discussing is, uh, we're discussing basically implication implications of of a bad 
RTO. Retransmission. Why we will have a bad RTO? Because RTT is uh, uh, is is changing, right? So let's uh, let's assume two scenarios. Let's assume a scenario where uh, where where the RTO is RTO is too small. Okay, the time that a sender wait for the acknowledgement to arrive is uh, too small. Let's see what happens in this case. Let's assume a scenario where we have a machine A, then we have uh, we have a router R in between, okay, and then we have a machine B, which is which is the receiver, and uh, this is the timeline increasing downwards. And let's assume the sender A in this case transmits segment number one. And segment number one is uh, forwarded by the router to the destination machine B. And uh, destination machine B in this case generates uh, the acknowledgement of, so it generates acknowledgement of one, okay? And that acknowledgement is forwarded by uh, that acknowledgement is forwarded by the router. So this is what this is one. Yes, you're right. This is one RTT round trip time. The time uh, uh, required to receive uh, an acknowledgement of a transmitted segment. Okay. So let's assume now. Upon receiving this acknowledgement one, which means this is, would be a positive acknowledgement means two. This means the B has received uh, segment number one and is now expecting segment number two. So what will happen in this case? Now, uh, now A will transmit segment number two. Let's assume there is some processing delay at router. And then after some time, router forwards this segment number two to machine B and machine B uh, you know, generates this acknowledgement, right? Which is is asking for segment number three, and now this is forwarded by the uh, by this router to sender uh, uh, sender A. But here was the you know here was the uh, here was the you know RTO. So this is you know RTT, and the RTO is say a slight uh, is slightly greater than uh, RTT. Let's as you can see how it is calculated in a minute. So what's happening in this case? So after the expiry of this uh, retransmission timeout, this sender will again transmit segment number two. Segment two was rightly transmitted. Um, correctly, uh, correctly transmitted and was forwarded by the router. This acknowledgement is on the way, but sender A in this case has retransmitted this segment number two. Why? Because the RT, uh, RTT uh, is small and because we have calculated this round trip time based on this RTT. So our, uh, this uh, uh, round uh, trip time is small and that's why this a uh, retransmission timeout is also too small, right? And because it's too small, so what's happening here? What's happening here? Yes, you're right. We are unnecessarily and we are unnecessarily doing retransmissions. So there is no need to retransmit the segment, right? But this retransmission is happening, taking place because this RTO is too small. So the implication of a bad RTO, the first case is that RTO is too small. We will be unnecessarily retransmitting the correctly transmitted segments. Okay, let's talk about the, the other case. And let's assume now that in this case, RTO is too big. RTO too big. Let's see what will happen in this case. And again, assume a scenario that where we have a sender A, and then we have a say router R, and then we have destination machine in this case B. 
Okay. And this is the timeline increasing downwards. And um, uh, the sender A has transmitted segment one. Segment one is forwarded by router two. Uh, destination B and destination B has generated its uh, acknowledgement. Say it's asking for segment number two, and this acknowledgement has been forwarded by uh, uh, forwarded by this router to the sender. Okay, and now this is what this is our RTT round trip time. Okay, and now let's assume um, it transmits segment number two. OK. And now uh, this segment number two um, has lost on its way to destination. OK. I mean, it has not received by the router R here. So now what is happening here? So now it's waiting for the say expiry of the retransmission timeout. And here it was the RTT, and this is our retransmission timeout. On the expiry of the re this retransmission timeout, it will retransmit this segment number two. So see what is happening here. Here this RTU is too big. Because this RTU is too big, this means this will result in, yes, you're right, lower throughput. Why? Because we are waiting, uh, uh, we are waiting and waiting uh, for our RTU to expire to retransmit it to retransmit a lost uh, segment, right? So we'll end up wasting our bandwidth by not sending anything on the network. So I hope, uh, students, um, uh, it's clear to you that how the retransmission timeout uh, uh, can be affected because of the varying RTT and how varying RTT complicates the computation of retransmission timer. So that's why, so that's why um, an RTO, uh, that's why an RTO must, uh, so that's why the, the time that we are interested in calculating retransmission timer must adapt, uh, must adapt to actual, and current RTT. So rather than having uh, considering the uh, you know current RTT, we also need to have the actual RTT, right? So this means we have to estimate. What do we mean by this? This means we have to estimate. We have to estimate the RTT. Okay. Rather than using its current value, we have to estimate it by uh, by observing or by watching uh, returning acknowledgments. Okay, what do we mean by this? This means um, this means we need to compute a smooth. So we need to compute a smooth. Uh, Estimate um, and the smooth uh, estimate can be calculated by by keeping uh, running average running average of what running average of the RTT right so rather than using one recent value of RTT, which is varying, which is changing, right? So what we'll do, we'll uh, you know uh, keep it um, running average to calculate a smooth uh, estimate. And by the way, this uh, this running average is also known as uh, exponentially exponentially weighted. Moving average. PW, right? In steps, we call it exponentially moving average. So instead of uh, taking one value of RTT to consideration and uh, to calculate 
the retransmission time out on it based on it will have its running average means exponentially weighted moving average EWMA. So now how we calculate uh, uh, smooth uh, estimate or estimated RTT. So the smooth uh, estimate or let's call it estimated uh, estimated RTT is basically um, uh, estimated RTT prime is basically alpha uh, into uh, estimated current value of estimated RTT. So new value of estimated RTT is equal to alpha into estimated current value of estimated RTT plus one minus alpha into sample RTT, the recent value of round trip time. Okay, so this is how uh, we um, uh, we control the variation in round trip time. Okay, by calculating its running average or exponentially weighted moving average. Here, uh, the sample RTT is uh, is the time between a segment that is transmitted and when its acknowledgement is received. This is the recent value, okay? And uh, this new value of estimated RTT is alpha into estimated current value of the previous value of estimated RTT plus one minus alpha into sample RTT. By the way, this alpha uh, is a weight here, right? So if uh, this alpha is, if this alpha is, let's assume one, what does this mean? This means um, each sample Each sample changes uh, by head, uh, sample means sample RTT change uh, changes uh, the estimate uh, only a little bit, only a little bit. Okay, but what if this the value of this alpha is zero? What do you think what will happen? Yes, you are right. So this means each uh, sample uh, will influence or each sample influences uh, the estimate heavily. Uh, estimate heavily, okay? So we have to very carefully uh, select the value of uh, uh, this, uh, this, this weight. And usually it's the value of this weight is um, one by eight, or this value is 0.125. So this is the value that we uh, uh, use for alpha to calculate estimated RTT. So let me again repeat it. So the estimated new value of estimated RTT is equal to alpha into the current value of estimated RTT plus uh, one minus alpha into sample RTT. Um, this will help us in normalizing uh, these variations in round trip time. The next question is, so we have estimated the RTT, we have you know calculated its running average, but uh, still we have to calculate or we have to compute RTO. So the question is how to compute, how to how to compute RTO, right? So, um, so we can say that uh, uh, we can say uh, RTO is RTO is equal to say beta times RTT, and this RTT is, by the way, this you know estimated RTT, right? So let's assume. And typically, uh, this you know, beta is set to two or three. Two or three. Okay, but 